SQL Server 2025 is now in public preview. Learn all the highlights as we kick off this new series for SQL Server 2025 on Data Exposed. <music> Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. This is a really exciting episode because we're kicking off a special series to celebrate SQL Server 2025. So to do that, of course, I had to bring Bob Ward back on the show. Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. Anna, I can't believe I'm back on Data Exposed again. Great to be here. It's great to have you. And you've got a very special vest with a very special icon, and I want to learn all about it. So what's going on with SQL Server 2025? And you may remember last November at Microsoft Ignite, we actually announced the private preview of SQL Server 2025. We wanted to get out to our customers and let them know that in calendar year 2025, we were going to put a new version of SQL Server out there. And it was so exciting at Microsoft Build to get to announce the public preview so everybody can get their hands on it of SQL Server 2025 with this fresh new icon and logo. Uh, a pretty amazing release. If you look at that sentence underneath this release, it kind of really signifies a major value proposition for our customers. The fact that SQL is now AI ready, but enterprise because they, they trust us. They trust us for best in class security and performance. And the fact that AI is gonna be built into the product in a secure, isolated and scalable way is gonna be significant from other products out there in the industry. But we also wanna make sure you know it's a developer release, the most significant release for developers in a decade. And then we're still making sure that customers know they can connect SQL Server wherever it exists both to Azure and to services like Microsoft Fabric. And here's a pointer at the bottom down here of a blog that we posted kind of highlighting what's important for this release. But as I go through this information, Anna, at the very end, I've got some really cool resources. I know you have other people coming on your show to kind of dive into some of their areas. But let me kind of give you a highlight, you know, kind of a little bit more about what is new about SQL Server 2025. Awesome. Yeah, we're kicking it off and we're going to have a whole series, but let's get right into it. What do we need to know? Anna, you might remember first, though, something like this. You've been, you and I have worked together a lot on SQL technologies, and it used to say ground to cloud. I know you've been heavily involved in Fabric. So as your audience thinks about SQL Server 2025, just remember that it's an incredible story of ground to cloud and Fabric. So things like AI technology exist in all these places where you love SQL. And a lot of our customers are there. So even though we're excited about SQL Server 2025 as being brand new, we want customers to know that you can trust that wherever you're going to exist, ground to cloud to fabric, SQL's there for you as a developer. So you can kind of develop once and deploy where you want to be. But then if I think about SQL Server 2025, every time I, we have a new release for SQL Server, I always build what I call a camera slide because people want to take a photo of this visual look of what's new. I call this top area what I call the area of innovation. Left-hand side, AI being built in. We'll talk a little bit more of what that's like. Why is it built in? How is it important for customers? What do these icons all mean? And then the most significant, again, release for developers in a decade. I'm probably going to say that like a dozen times uh, because some really cool features there. And then Microsoft Fabric being a very, very important product as a unified data platform, we want to make sure customers are comfortable that SQL Server can connect to be integrated with Fabric. So from a what's new perspective that's brand new and innovative, that's that top section. But as we've talked before in your show, the meat and potatoes of SQL Server is security, performance, and availability. And we have actually a lot of functionality here in this area. We'll kind of show at the very end kind of a pretty big list of stuff that's going to happen in the database engine itself. And then anchored here at the bottom, Arc will still be a great value proposition for customers to connect to Azure. Uh, we've got a new management studio. I think you may have probably had Aaron on your show to talk about that with a co-pilot experience with it. Connected really well. It's a great tool now to use with SQL Server 2025. We'll always be the industry benchmark leader. We're working on that. We're optimized for new hardware for customers to make sure they can take advantage of that. And don't forget, SQL Server runs on Windows, Linux, containers, Kubernetes, and all this functionality exists there. Awesome, Bob. This is great. It's a, a, a great picture slide. I went full screen so people can take their little screenshot in this in this. Yeah, case. get a screenshot from it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely want to learn all about each of these. And of course, the hottest thing everyone's talking about is AI. So maybe we could start there. Yeah, let's do that. Now, you know, we're going to have other guests on your show. They're going to really dive deeper with demos and so forth. But I thought it'd be interesting because, you know, I am an architect. <laughs> so show an architecture a visual representation of AI with SQL Server. This is vector searching now in SQL 25. This is the AI built in. What's important is that box in the middle is the SQL engine. 
And notice the AI services and models exist outside the engine and are not inside SQL. So it's very isolated and secure, but it can run the same server, the same VM. And the process looks very similar to this. You create what's called a model definition to connect to the model of your choice. That could be in the cloud, Azure OpenAI. It could be any OpenAI compatible model running in the foundry, running on premises, or the popular open source framework, Olama. And then you have this range of embedding models accessible to you. But you're going to define the model and where it exists. Then you're going to go through a process with the T-SQL language you're familiar with to create embeddings, which are vector numbers that represent your text data to power smarter searching. Then you'll go through the process of taking a prompt. But first, you might build an index. Let's go build a vector index on top of that, right? We're all about indexes in SQL. So build a vector index on top of those embeddings to do searching. Then you're going to take a prompt from application like a natural language prompt. In fact, often these prompts contain things and words not in your data. So then what you can do is use T-SQL to generate another embedding on the prompt. Now you've got two sets of numbers. You have the number from the prompt and the numbers in your tables in your database with a new vector type. And then with this index, you can do a vector search using T-SQL or even combine it with other criteria for hybrid searching. The beauty of this model is this. You define the model where it exists, ground or cloud, you don't worry what these numbers look like, these embeddings. The models handle that. And we give you all the T-SQL interfaces. So we've taken the complexity out of doing vector search support. And then as an extensibility story, we have this stored procedure that's been around for Azure forever to contact other models that may not fit into these actual API types or even for multimodal scenarios. This is what is called AI built into the engine. But notice here in a very secure and isolated and scalable fashion, it is the biggest focus and why we call AI ready enterprise for SQL 25. Awesome, this is great. It's definitely gonna help developers as they go through building these new AI apps. Yeah, but think about it also, T-SQL, you already know about it. It's connected with frameworks. It uses the security model of SQL Server. So secure, familiar, uh, but giving you that new smarter searcher capabilities. Well, let's talk developers, Anna. We all know developers love SQL Server. The most significant release, I think I said that like three times, like <laughs> repeat it again. So first of all, don't forget that Data API Builder, which is great for like using GraphQL or REST, works very well with SQL Server 2025. But check out this lineup, a new native JSON type with built-in two gigabytes for JSON docket storage and a JSON type with an index and a set of optimized functions specific for JSON. So really first-class processing of NoSQL of JSON documents inside the database engine. And then the most popular T-SQL request in a decade <laughs> is regular expression support. And finally, it's in T-SQL. No more building your own SQL CLR module, all built into the T-SQL language. Very popular, very, very exciting. If you're a developer and you use change data capture today, we have something called change event streaming, where now you can set up your database to consume transaction log events, and we'll push these events to a JSON format to an Azure Event Hub endpoint. I showed a demonstration of Microsoft Build that you build an Azure AI agent on top of a scenario like this. So great for event-driven architecture and reduce all the IO, IO overhead of using change data capture. And then we mentioned about that stored procedure that I showed you earlier. Imagine taking and connecting inside the engine to any REST endpoint on premises or in the cloud. We have customers and partners already taking a look at how can they integrate that way. And behind this end also is a just plethora of new T-SQL type functions that we put into the language. So a, a massive, massive, huge investment for developers in this release. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great release for developers. I think you said maybe the best in a decade. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, yeah, that's the fifth time. We should, yeah, maybe we'll do it by 10 times by the time this is over, right? <laughs> All right. What else is going on in SQL Server 2025? Sure. Well, oh, oh, quick announcement real quick. <laughs> hey, did you know there was a GitHub Copilot for SQL? We demonstrated that at Build and a new Python driver. So for Python developers, a new public preview of our Python driver. But this is the one that I think is very significant, but doesn't seem that way, maybe by looking at it. Developers have asked forever to go develop and test for free with developer edition, but they want SQL Server to behave like standard edition. Because today, they have to go use an actual SQL license to do that. So now, as a developer, you can download two different versions of developer edition. One to behave like standard edition, one like Enterprise Edition, that's going to save developers so much time, money, cost, everything. Again, another huge popular request we've had for a long time. Very excited to deliver that. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, let's keep going. 
Maybe you've heard of Microsoft Fabric. It's been on your show a ton of times. And we know that customers want to integrate their data with Fabric. Look at the lineup down below here. SQL Server 2025 in public preview. SQL 16 through 2022 in public preview. Azure SQL Database in general availability. Managed Instance in public preview. Anywhere SQL exists, and of course, SQL Database and Fabric is already mirrored inside Fabric. So anywhere SQL exists now can be mirrored in Fabric and give you that great unified data platform. This is very exciting for our customers. In fact, you and I have been together at some of these events talking about yeah. Fabric and mirroring for SQL Server was one of those common requests that we have. Now it's all publicly available for everyone. It's great. Very exciting. I think we're going to see a lot of people trying this out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Anna, meat and potatoes, we still got to do it right. And we still have great stuff in the engine that people are going to love. And, you know, performance is critical for customers. And we've got some great things in the middle there. Some Hanson's for intelligent query processing, column store indexes, query store for read replicas. But actually, application concurrency can be just as critical. So how about just getting rid of lock escalation, getting rid of the blocking problems by a new optimi optimized locking feature that is also in Azure already. And things like setting a hint in the query store, if you'd like to abort a query that's taken over your server, or even set up resource governor so that TempDB doesn't go out of control. So great innovations happening to help developers keep their applications concurrent. On the right-hand side, always on availability groups, the flagship HADR feature for SQL Server has many different enhancements. The team has really looked at customer feedback, direct requests, escalations from customers, and put in a great deal of features to help with reliable failovers, tuning, performance, and diagnostics. So at the highest level here, there's great, great engine features, but I want you to look at this list. This is surprising. I think customers have seen the press that it's AI release. That's what they think. And I've been the one talking a lot about it, Anna. You know, there are 40 plus new features in the engine here that we announced in CTP 2.0 in public preview across performance, security, and availability. So some of these may seem kind of small, but together they provide an amazing package of what's possible in the SQL Server engine. I'm pretty excited about it. Absolutely. Yeah, I love to see all these things. And I can't wait for the series, just a plug for the series, because we're going to go deep into each of these things that are happening in the security, performance, and HADR space. The meat uh, and potatoes, as you say. The meat and potatoes, exactly. Now, Anna, one of the things that's interesting, we talked about this in the show. Sometimes I go on these walks around my park, and I have these crazy ideas in my head. And one of the things I had in my head the last few months has been a new architecture for SQL Server. So if you think about what we've talked about already in this show, imagine putting together an architecture now that looks like this. This is not your grandpa's SQL Server anymore. This is connecting SQL Server, whether it's with AGs in your own environment, with local AI models, with services in the, in the cloud and Azure for Foundry, building new event-driven architectures, mirroring to Fabric, supporting AI applications, modern applications of GraphQL, or managing new SSMS. This is a significant upgrade for our customers. If customers are thinking about, I think something modern and innovative to move forth my data architecture and platform, we believe SQL 25 can provide that. Wow, this is amazing. And Bob, just generally, it's great to hear all the updates that the team has been working on. I know people are going to be really excited to use this. And speaking of that, you know, we had a private preview program. I think it was pretty popular. Uh, what are people saying so far? You know, Anna, it was actually twice as many private preview customers signed up as in previous releases. We had a huge interest in it. Here's some great examples here. You look at customers that are looking at AI technologies already to think about how can I actually move forward their business with a smarter searching we talked about. Customers looking at change event streaming or mirroring for new event streaming architectures, event-driven architectures, or even just Intain, looking at the raw fundamental performance of Column Store. So across the board, we've seen customers have big interest and especially in those developer features. A lot of other customers also looking at this. And as we move closer to general availability later this year, we'll see more and more customers give us this interest. Awesome. Great to see and great to hear. Well, I know people want resources and we have them, a ton of resources. So we've got blog series coming out. Some already blogs published, more coming. Here's how to go get it. Anna, you want to go get the thing, get SQL Server 2025 allows you to download today for free in public preview and try out all this functionality. Great documentation. I've built some demonstrations on GitHub. The Right here, the, the a full version of the deck you're seeing right now is available on SQL Server 2025 decks. You know I'm an open source presenter, right? So all my stuff will be out there as we move forward with the release. We'll add more decks and things about the different features you've seen. 
So a lot of great announcements. You see SSMS down here, GitHub Copilot, Python Driver. And a build was a big deal for the SQL team. We got a lot of things coming on and SQL Server 2025 was kind of an anchor for it. Awesome. Amazing. Well, Bob, you know, I learned so much. I'm sure our viewers did as well. I also got really excited about the series that we're doing. So uh, folks, stay tuned. Definitely follow and subscribe to our channel so you can see the, the episodes as we dive deeper into SQL Server 2025. We've got so many researches. Uh, so if you like this episode, go ahead and give it a like, leave us a comment and let us know what you're most excited about in SQL Server 2025. We'll put links to all these resources in the description so you can learn more. And we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed. Mm -hmm.